Hello everyone, welcome to another vacuum cleaner unboxing and first look. This time we're going to be having a look at the brand new Miele Duoflex HX1 Total Care Cordless Vacuum Cleaner. This is the top of the range and it's only just been launched by Miele in the UK. These cleaners range from £369 for the base models up to £499 for the top of the range, which this is. This is the Total Care, so it comes with most of the tools. You can buy, of course, the tools to fit the lower end models. Not available at the moment on Miele's website, but I'm sure they soon will be. So if you only want to spend 369, you can get the base model. And as far as I can tell, the only difference apart from the colors is the number of tools supplied. So without any further ado, let's unbox this brand new Miele cordless. Here's everything out of the box. We get a metal wand in this rather attractive gold color. A flexible crevice tool. It's a nice long crevice tool, but becomes even longer because you can pull out the flexible end. So that's going to be ideal for cleaning down the sides of your major appliances in your kitchen, inside your car, down the sides of your upholstered furniture to get those crumbs. And then it just pushes back for normal use. We also get a very welcome addition to a cordless machine, a stretchable, flexible hose. This will make it even more ideal for the car so you can get right under the car seats and in all the nooks and crannies without having to hold a bulky machine. And of course, this Miele has a permanent on off switch so you don't have to hold onto the trigger to keep the machine on. So that is fantastic. I expect you'll be able to buy this as an optional extra if you buy one of the machines that doesn't include the hose. We also get a standard crevice tool and all these tools are brand new to the Miele HX1 Duo Flex. It doesn't extend but you've got a sort of softer tip to that crevice tool. This is your upholstery nozzle for doing your upholstered furniture, your mattresses, curtains etc. You've got two sort of rubbery flexible, I don't know what you'd call those, little rubbery nodules on there. I expect that helps a bit with agitation, possibly with pet tears, etc. You also get this little clip, so you can put two of the cleaning tools and clip them onto the wand so you can access them at all times. This is another new nozzle, a nice soft dusting brush, a long dusting brush. And of course you can adjust the angle and you can see underneath quite a different design there. We've got these rings of brushes. I was expecting like a, a velvet type pad underneath here, like a Dyson one, but that's a completely new design. Then you get the mini motorized tool. So that's good for pet hairs on your stairs, on your upholstery, cleaning your car mats, pet bedding, etc. Quite stiff brushes. Of course, the brush roll does come out for cleaning. So that's your mini motorized tool. That's also available if you choose the cat and dog version of this machine. Again, a completely new dusting brush, triangular shaped, so it'll get into the corners for dusting your shelving, tops of books, uh, lampshades, etc. And again, you can angle it to suit whatever you're cleaning. This is the wall bracket, so you can mount the cleaner to the wall. You get the screws as well and the plugs. And of course you get the mains adapter, branded Miele. This one has a three pin plug on it because it's a UK version. But if you buy this in whatever country you live in, obviously it will come with the suitable mains adapter. Here we have the main floor nozzle for carpets and floors. There's no headlights on this particular one and no anti-hair wrap. Medium soft brushes, I'd say those are. You can remove that for easy cleaning. It just slides out as simply as that. And then you've got access to the cavity if you need to give that a wipe out or check for blockages. So that slides in. And then you just need to secure it. Let's make sure it's gone in. You'll find a locked and an unlocked padlock symbol. So you just need to make sure it's in the unlocked and then just twist it round to the locked position. It's got a flexible neck and that hose seems quite 
durable compared to some. They, that's the point that the some of cleaners like this. These often split, but that seems to be made of quite a rigid, durable, well, flexible, but durable material. And of course the neck swivels. And then finally, we have the cleaner itself. And I must say it's very smart. It's not the lightest to hold in the hand. The battery is fitted to this. You can't swap out the batteries on this model like you can with the TriFlex machine. But you can change the battery if it fails after however many years you use it and the battery no longer charges up. It is possible for you to replace the battery but they're not designed to be pulled out and charged. So you can't buy an additional battery for this and just swap it like you can with other cordless cleaners. It's only a two speed motor as well, high and low. We do have a battery charge indicator. There's three lights there. I'll just quickly switch it on. You will need to charge this for three and a half hours before first use, but there will be some charge in the battery. That's quiet. As you saw though, there's only one light, so you need to charge it. All the lights will illuminate as it charges, and then when it's fully charged, all the lights will go out. It's quite comfortable to hold though. It's, yeah, feels quite nice in the hand. Very sturdy hand grip. And I like this design here on the side. It makes it look very smart. And of course, you've got the gold accent to match the wand. So the controls are here. So you've got this control for switching on and off. And then this button will switch it into the max mode. And of course, now one thing I didn't like about the Triflex is the messy bin emptying. I, I found that even on the HX2, they improved it slightly, but I thought, it was always awkward when I used my HX1. That was the worst worst thing about it. I liked the machine apart from that. The Miele Duoflex is more like a regular cordless handheld machine where you have a button that opens a flap and it certainly does open it. That really opened with a bit of vigor. So there must be a spring in there. So you take this outside your bin, open it, shake it out. If any hairs or debris gets trapped around, you can pull out this central piece like so. Now Mila saying the instructions don't wash this but looking at it I can't really see any reason why you couldn't rinse that under water but make sure it's dry before putting it back. Um, but yeah the instructions tell you not to wet this. The instructions also tell you not to wet the exhaust filter which is a bit odd but they said that with the TriFlex when I first got the TriFlex and then I think they introduced a washable filter so yeah we've got the bin that doesn't come off but you could wipe that out with a damp cloth if you want to keep it nice and clean and then that bit needs to go back of course it just pushes in like so there is a filter cleaning system so the exhaust filter is housed in this part here so you can turn this the arrow is in both directions so if you turn it like this what that does, it flicks off any fine dust on the filter and it should fall into the bin. Mila recommend you do this after every use and you could just, or before you use it again, and certainly before you take the filter out for cleaning, make sure you turn that filter cleaning knob. And then it just comes out and you can see it's a pleated filter. And again, it is saying, do not wash. There's a symbol there, tap or faucet symbol. If you look at the, the filter itself, as I turn the knob at the top, as you can see the pleats of the filter are being flicked by the mechanism. So when it's in the machine and you turn the cleaning knob, it should flick off a lot of the fine dust that will have adhered to the filter. To insert the filter, you must ensure that top is uppermost. So you just relocate it and it clicks into position. Miele have provided a cleaning brush built into the side of the machine. This is to clean the pre-filter only, not 
the post motor filter. So if you want to clean the pre-filter, you just remove it. Then you can use this brush to brush any debris or hair off the mesh part of the filter. But the instructions state not to use this on the pleated filter. So basically, don't use this brush. You can't wash this filter. You can't use a brush on it. So I'm assuming Miele are relying on their self-clean feature to turn and clean this filter. But I suppose you can tap it on a flat surface outside, which possibly will be more effective than removing the dust using the cleaning system. Obviously, after I've used this a bit, I'll be able to see how effective this filter clean system is. But yeah, already a couple of disappointments with this machine. Well, three disappointments. The, uh, the non-washable filter, I'll put it up the wrong way. It'll only go in one way. The fact it's made in China, which I thought it might be. And also that wall bracket, there's definitely something amiss with that. The instructions don't actually match the reality of that wall bracket. So although it will hold the machine on the wall, you still have to manu manually plug in the jack into the charging point. I'm not bothered myself. I don't want this on the wall. I don't think vacuum cleaners are a piece of artwork. I'd rather have it tucked away. So I'm okay with that. But if you wanted your Miele on the wall to grab and go, it's not going to be quite so convenient having to plug it in every time you've used it. When I ordered the Miele Duoflex, I assumed it would come with the speed lock wall bracket. Now that's a bracket that enables you to take the handheld unit off the wall bracket, leaving the extension wand attached. But looking at my instructions and obviously inside the box, I've only got this standard wall bracket. For the top of the range model, I assumed I'd get the speed lock bracket. So I'm not very happy about that. I've seen it on Miele videos where you can just remove this, as I said, leave the wand in place. If you just want to grab the handheld unit, it just pulls out of the special speed lock bracket. You can use it and pop it back in without having to take the wand off. It doesn't come with it. It comes with this basic wall bracket. Another thing to note, which is, in my opinion, absolutely ridiculous, in order to screw the wall bracket to the wall, you need a Torx screwdriver, a special star-shaped screwdriver. Not many people have those in their toolbox. They'd have standard flathead or crosshead screwdrivers. This requires a Torx head screwdriver. So, I mean, I've got them, but a lot of people won't. So bear that in mind. Also, I'm afraid I can't for the life of me work out how to put this on the wall. Now, obviously, there are two holes in this bracket so actually fixing it to the wall is fine but the instructions show putting this through the bottom now let me just check there's this clip here that goes like that so that's the top of the bracket so it shows pushing the cable through and it's supposed to hold the charging jack in place well it seems to go there because if we take the cleaner and here's the bracket on the actual machine on the bin so you'd slide it in when it's on the wall and in theory it's supposed to connect up can you see the jack there it doesn't it's in completely the wrong place also it shows putting this through here and then putting this part I can't push it all the way down, but this part is supposed to fit on the top, but there's no way of doing it. So you can fit this part like that. Can you see how it closes off the top? So there's no way for the jack to poke through. So I don't know what this is about. This is ridiculous. I might contact Miele. I don't know if they've designed this wrong. This will hold the machine on the wall. Once that's secured, to the wall and at the correct height obviously you can see it fits onto the cleaner like that so the cleaner will fit on the wall like this it does leave space for the jack so basically it won't connect up automatically when you put the machine on you do have to plug the jack in much as the same way you do with the Henry Quick but for a premium 500 pound vacuum cleaner 
I wasn't expecting that at all. So I don't know if it's a mistake because looking at the instructions, it shows you actually putting the cable into this. It pokes out, holds it in place, and I assume that when you pop the cleaner back on the charger, on the wall bracket, it will start to charge. But no, not in this case. I think I will contact Mila about that. I'm not very happy about that at all. And of course, make sure you've got the correct Torx screwdriver if you want to screw it to the wall yourself. So to use the screws provided, you'll need a T20 Torx screwdriver. Unlike the Miele Triflex that can be used in three different configurations, the Miele Duoflex can be used in two, i.e. as a handheld machine and also as an upright stick. So in handheld mode, you can attach any of the attachments directly to the cleaner, including the powered attachments. Obviously, you can attach the mini motorized tool, but also for deep cleaning of stairs, you can attach the main carpet and floor nozzle directly to the machine as well. It's got this new release system here. So you press it down where the arrow is pointing and you should be able to release it. It's all a bit stiff because it's brand new. The smaller tools, they just have a friction fit. It's just the motorized tools and the wand that have this secure locking mechanism with this release collar. We'll give it a quick go. Obviously this needs a full charge, three and a half hours before you can use it properly. So that's the mini motorized tool. We'll just give the larger tool a quick go. And of course, you can attach the wand to the cleaner for carpet and floor cleaning and for reaching up high. So you could attach the extra long crevice tool. It's, it's so big, I can't actually fit it, just about fit it into the camera shot. So in this configuration, you can use the flexible crevice tool to reach up high to get the cobwebs, etc. And of course, well, you can, if you want, you can put the mini motorized tool on the end. Let's just check that, it should. Yes, it fits on the end. But of course, for carpet and floor cleaning, you need to attach the main carpet and floor nozzle. Like most cleaners of this type, it won't stand up on its own. You do have to lean it up against the wall, or if you're worried about it falling over, just lay it down on the floor if you need to pause your vacuuming for any length of time. That's just about all I can show you at the moment, because I do need to charge this up before putting some dirt down and doing an initial demo. It'll be interesting to see how this Miele copes with my plush pile Saxony carpet. The Dyson cleaners I've tested, even the Gen 5, will only work on this carpet on minimum power with the suction open on the actual nozzle. So it'll be interesting to see what this Miele does. It's supposed to adjust itself automatically. The suction will adjust according to the surface you're cleaning. Let me just see where this is made, and yes, it's engineered by Miele, but it's made in China. So you're still paying premium prices, although Miele regard this as their entry level. This is £500. I don't think that's entry level. This is the top of the range. It is 369 for the bottom of the range, even 369 Well, Miele say that's an entry level price, but for most people, that would not be considered an entry level vacuum cleaner. But so far, I like it. I haven't seen it in action yet. We'll be seeing it in action shortly, but as I said, I need to charge it up fully. So we'll just take the charger. And of course you can attach the charging bracket here. You can attach that to the wall. I'm not going to. I don't really like my vacuum cleaners on the wall, but that's an option if you've got a utility room with a socket nearby, it would be ideal to put it on the wall there. I would say that's just over a metre in length. Yeah, so it's quite, quite a nice length of cord you get. So I'll just plug in. And then we need to plug in the battery. Where's the hole? Here it is, just here. So plug in the jack. So where it's located, this will 
you can just put this on the floor next to your socket out the way or you can put it on a kitchen worktop near a socket and charge it like that. You might not be able to drill holes in your wall if you live in rented accommodation so you can charge the Miele like this. While the Duoflex is charging you'll see a pulsing white light. One light means it's just started its charge, two lights mean it's half charged and of course when all three lights are lit it's almost fully charged. When all the lights go out the machine is charged and ready for use. We've got a bit of a wait before I can show you this Miele Duoflex in action but don't go away because by the miracle of technology you'll be seeing me doing an initial demo very soon but obviously in my time I've got to wait three and a half hours for the battery to fully charge. Before I end this section of the video I'll just point something out that some people might want to know. You can fit regular Miele tools to this machine just like you could with the Triflex. So here's a nozzle from an old Miele upright I've got. So as you can see you can fit tools. So if you've got a Miele cylinder cleaner you can use tools from that on this machine. Certainly directly onto the cleaner. Not sure if you can use it on the wand. Let's just check that. Oh yes I think you should be able to. Let's take that off. Yes so there is a bit of backwards compatibility with this. So if you've got a few old Miele tools. Don't throw them away. Use them on your Miele Duoflex. Okay then, I'm going to put this to one side and we'll be back for a quick demo. The Duoflex is now fully charged so I'm ready to use it for the first time. I'm not going to use the boost setting, I'm just going to turn it on and use the default automatic setting. So this machine should adapt to various carpets and floors itself. I shouldn't have to adjust anything. The boost is only useful if you've got an intensive area to clean, if there's some very dirty areas that you need a bit of extra suction then you can press boost but I think for day to day use just switch the machine on and use it and in theory and hopefully in practice it should adjust itself automatically. Now this is a notoriously bad carpet to demonstrate on, it's a plush pile Saxony. I do have trouble with a lot of cordless and some mains powered machines they just can't cope with this type of pile. It's not a high pile but it's a plush pile so we'll see if the meal is going to cut out or is it going to clean effectively. Right here goes for the first time I've got some uh, organic dirt meaning dirt that I haven't put down there's bits of dirt on this carpet that are here naturally so let's give it a go. Okay, well it was going great guns until it cut out. As you can see, you can see where I've been, it does groom the pile. But unless there's a way I can make the suction less on this, which I can't, I don't think this machine is going to be suitable for this carpet. All the other carpets in my house, it'll be fine on, they're a much shorter pile. But on this carpet, right, well we'll try again, but I'll, I'll, I'll try and keep the head moving a bit faster. It's possibly because it was going slowly, I don't know. What a shame, it's cut out again. <laughs> well, what it is cleaning, it is, it, what a shame, it's, it's finding dirt. There is dirt already in that bin. But, oh, right, we'll try it a different way. We'll try it going this way across the carpet pile. Still cutting out, I'm afraid. Again, for this carpet is cutting out. I think this cleaner will have to go back because I'm sure it'll be fine on other carpet and rugs in my home, but this is the largest room in my house. If I can't use a vacuum cleaner for 500 pounds on a plush pile, what is the point of it? There's no way of lowering the suction. With a Dyson, I had trouble with the top of the range Dyson, but at least with a Dyson, I could put it on the lowest economy setting, the eco setting. And the Dyson also has a little slide control on the head so I could open that out. So even though I had to have the Dyson on its lowest suction with the gate open on the uh, cleaning head, at least it worked, at least I could push it, at least it was picking up bits. It's such a shame because 
this cleaner's good when it when it works i mean just just the tiny areas that i've cleaned when it's actually worked it's found i don't know if i can show you without it all going everywhere and i have vacuumed a couple of days ago but it's finding that's that's gritty particles but oh dearie me well i haven't tried it i've tried it one direction i haven't tried it going this way because the direction of the pile may have an effect on the brush roll stalling As you can see if I go in this direction of the pile it does work and you can see how it's grooming the carpet we've got those nice carpet lines so I need to make sure I'm facing my kitchen door and using the cleaner in this direction because when I was doing it in this direction it kept stalling let's try it again so this machine is very temperamental, the direction you use it. So I have to always clean the carpet in this direction. It is working now, but I've got to go quite quickly because if I start to slow down, I have a feeling the brush will switch off. Well, after a shaky start, I did manage to get this Miele Duoflex HX1 to work on my Saxony plush pile carpet. But I have to tell you, it is quite an effort to push on carpet of this type. Of course, I'll be trying it around my home on the other carpets I have. And I'm sure I'll have no problems with the very short pile carpet I have in the rest of my house. But as I said, Saxony plush this cleaner and many other cleaners don't like it. Now this is the HX1 version. I expect in a year or two, Miele will produce an HX2. And if they do, Miele please at least put some sort of suction control on the head. Many cleaners have them now, Dyson do it. The Henry Quick has a little valve you can open that makes it easier to push on this sort of carpet. So I think it's back to the drawing board in some respects for this machine for people that have got Saxony plush or any sort of velvet type carpet, it might be a problem. But I can't try this machine out on every carpet. That's why I can't recommend which machine you get. All carpets are different. All homes are different. All people's needs are different. So I'm very reluctant to say, yes, this is a good machine. Apart from the issue with this carpet, I'm, you know, well, the, the jury, <laughs> the jury is out. I can't tell you yet. I will be doing a further updated video of this. I'm going to show you it in action on this carpet. I might bring a rug down with, with a different pile. I'm going to put some dirt down, but let's have a look at the dirt it's picked up. The small area, about a third of my living room, I've gone over quite quickly with this machine. Bear in mind, I have vacuumed uh, just a couple of days ago, really. So let's have a look. Wow. Now, that is quite surprising. Now, I always expect pet hair and surface fluff. I always get that when vacuuming. But listen to that. That's grit. That is gritty particles. 
I can feel the it's like sand. Where is that? Where has that come from? I mean, not only do I vacuum a lot, I've had to recently been shampooing this carpet in many different areas because I've got a dog who seems to want to wee in the house at the moment. So I've been getting out shampooer and going over many areas of the carpet. And it wasn't that long ago, maybe two weeks ago, that I quickly whipped over the main areas with an upright carpet shampooer. Where is it getting all this? So I have to say, I am impressed with that. So hopefully the little niggles I've initially found on this machine will be outweighed by the performance. Just look at that. I'm going to finish this video with a little cleaning montage showing you the Miele Duoflex in action. I'll put down some extra dirt on a rug and also on a hard floor so we can see how well it copes with hard floor cleaning. If the hard floor performance is as good as the carpet cleaning performance, then I'll be pretty happy. I have a few niggles with this machine, mainly down to my carpet choices, but all in all, well, I can't give you a full verdict yet. I need to own this for quite some time, a few more weeks at least. Use it all around my home, use all the attachments, and then I'll do a follow-up video. So please subscribe for that. I won't have covered everything in this video. There's always something I've forgotten. So if you have any comments or questions about this particular vacuum, please comment below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.